Supreme Court has declared that the federal government cannot mandate Medicaid expansion, what will happen state by state? Will most states cover, even though the federal government is paying most of the cost, will the state simply choose not to cover these folks? And if the state does not cover it, what happens about the overall goal of achieving almost universal access? How close to universal, universal access will we get? What will happen to the cost? <clears throat> Conservatives are predicting an explosion of costs. And will the ACA lead to an improvement in quality? This. Uh, Congress's power under the Commerce Clause was limited. They couldn't for this is the this is the broccoli argument. You can't Congress cannot force people to eat broccoli. And if we all agree that if they can't do that, then they can't force them to buy health insurance either. Uh, a lot of people, including me, thought that that was a, a rather formal uh, and uh, un unrealistic, uh, in a practical sense, uh, sort of distinction, but it prevailed. The individual mandate was, was held unconstitutional. I think a lot of us in the room are sort of asking the question, uh, so what's next, right? So it's been ruled constitutional, and Professor Chopra's indicated, and John, the context of that and some of the legal significance of that and some of the implications going forward in terms of the court. But in terms of people in this country getting health care and how this act is now going to be implemented, uh, I want to address my comments to those, those questions. And I'll, I'll do it. I would like you to keep in mind, I think, uh, three, three words of what we can expect next. It's already occurring. Lobbying, calculating, and planning, okay? And I'll say a little bit about, uh, about each of those in, in uh, 10 minutes. First of all, the lobbying has already begun. You may recall that in order to get the act passed, the president very early on cut some deals with the hospital industry, with the pharmaceutical industry, with the medical device industry, etc. that they agreed to give up billions of dollars in payments in return for the fact that if this legislation passed, more Americans would have health insurance coverage, that hospitals wouldn't have to give charity care, these people would come to the emergency room maybe still, but they would be covered for their care, and so on. In exchange for that, they agreed to some of these payment cuts. They said it should be you know, done over time. Uh, they're also still recognizing that in parts of the country, safety net institutions and the fact that the uh, undocumented immigrants are not covered, it wouldn't totally relieve hospitals of some of the challenges of caring for people, the fact that they would not get paid, but nonetheless it would help to some extent. Uh, given the Medicaid part of the act now that has been uh, uh, essentially saying you do not have to expand your Medicaid programs, it remains to be seen what states will and will not expand their programs. Uh, the hospital industry is already in there saying, okay, uh, you backed out of the deal, or the Congress said, or the uh, Supreme Court has said there's gonna be strictures on that part of it, so we wanna renegotiate how much these cuts are going to be. And the medical device industry will be in there, and others as well. So you will see this playing out over the coming months. Remember, a lot of the administrative rules and regulations for implementing this law are still to be worked on. And that's where a lot of this lobbying will occur. Secondly, calculation. A lot of calculation is going to be going on, not necessarily in a political sense, right? Uh, but in a very dollars sense, right? And so, for example, uh, given the uh, uh, expansion of the fact in the individual market that people will now have a choice in, or pay the penalty. It's pay or play at the individual level. Now, it's the insurance companies and others are trying to figure out how many people are going to get the coverage on the exchange, some of it will be subsidized, uh, okay, versus pay the penalty. Who will these people be? How healthy will they be? What kinds of insurance products will they desire to they have uh, on the exchange, uh, for example? And they're beginning to run the numbers on some of this now. These are very important questions. So just to put a few numbers on this, 
uh, early on, and uh, these at the moment are, are simply uh, some, some estimates. But uh, uh, right now, the number of people buying their own plans will probably, an estimate, will increase nationwide by about 70%. This is what's called the individual market. Blue Shield has begun to do some modeling of what this means for them. And using uh, some of the uh, different benefit plans and so forth, their analysis suggests that only about 24% of those with the lowest expected medical costs, in other words, the healthy ones, only about 24% will buy health insurance. While those with the highest risks, okay, basically,